Good morning. Welcome to Westside Baptist Church. What a beautiful day in the Lord to be in his house. We're so thankful that he has brought you in his house today. Um, if you would, please stand as we prepare to sing hymn number 334, Blessed Assurance, 334. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine, oh what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood, this is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. of rapture now burst on my sight angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy whispers of love this is my story this is my song praising my Let's go to the Heavenly Father in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, as we come into your presence this morning, we come with great humility because of who you are. You're the sovereign God of this universe. You hold all things in your mighty hands. Nothing ever surprises you. You're in control of all things, and because of that, Lord, we give you glory today that is due to you. And Father, today we thank you for the valley times of our life as well as the mountaintop times. Sometimes, Lord, we have such wonderful spiritual times in our life, the mountaintop experiences, and Lord, we uh, bask in those and we thank you for those. But also, Father, we thank you for the valley times of life, the rainy times, the times of challenges. And Father, when you bring us through those valley times, we look back upon those times of our life and we realize I have certainly grown through that experience in my life. And Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we thank you today that the work of the cross is a finished work. Christ Jesus died on the cross for our sin, and he did it right. <laughs> he did it once for all. And we're thankful for the finished work of the cross. And because of that empty tomb today, we have blessed assurance. <laughs> we have absolute guaranteed victory in Jesus because Jesus did it all. He won the battle for us. And help us, Lord, just to stay faithful in what he's called us to do. And Lord, we pray for this service today that Christ Jesus be magnified, his name lifted up. We would see Jesus today. 
as he would want us to see him. We pray for all this in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody that loves Jesus said together, amen. amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Uh, now we will sing hymn number 187 87. in the garden, 187. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the warbirds hush their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he turns Please stand, those who are able, as we sing hymn number 595, Send the Light, 595. There's a call comes ringing o'er the restless wave, send the light, send the Let us 
pray that grace may everywhere abound. Send the light, send the light, and a Christ-like spirit everywhere be found. Send the light, send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. comes, I wanted to make sure we welcomed our visitors. If you're visiting with us, there should be a card in the back of the pew that's in front of you. If you could just fill that out so we have a record of your visit and place it in the offering plate up here by the piano as you exit. Brother Rick. And didn't they sound good today? They did. They did. Wow, that was awesome. Are you ready for God's Word today? Joshua chapter 9, when you find Joshua chapter 9, verses 3 through 4, rise with me in respect to God's holy word. When the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and to Ai, they also acted craftily and sat, uh, sat out envoys and took worn out sacks and on their donkeys and wineskins worn out and torn and mended, and worn out and patched sandals on their feet, and worn out clothes on themselves. And all the bread of their provisions was dry and had become crumbled. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful today that the door of grace is open to all that will repent of sin and turn to Christ. We thank you, Lord, today for your holy word that stands bold and stands true in a world that's ever-changing. And many turning from God, your word is still there. And it still reaches out to all those that would trust in Jesus. And Lord, today as we look to your words, I pray you'd help us tune in our spiritual ears that we would not miss the message that you have for each of us. For together, we pray in Jesus' mighty name and everybody that loves him said together, Amen. Amen. So the background for the sermon today, uh, it's very simple. The Israelites are on a spiritual high. The walls of Jericho came down. They overcame uh, Ai and the enemies that were there in the promised land. God had commanded them to go out and just annihilate all those people that would not turn to him. And that sounds a bit brash perhaps, but you understand that anybody that would turn to God, I believe, would be spared just as uh, in Jericho, Rahab the harlot and her family. They trusted in Jehovah and they were spared. Now, so they're going through this process. They're on a spiritual high. God is blessing them. Always be careful after you're on a spiritual high in life. Always be careful whether you just graduated or you got that new job, you got the promotion and so forth. Be, be careful, keep your guard up. Because that's when the devil will hit you the hardest. Now, in the midst of this spiritual high, there's a group of people called the Gibeonites. Now, the Gibeonites were crafty. They were uh, charlatans, okay? They, they were scam artists. Have you been scammed or somebody tried to scam you recently? Just this past week, I had two people try to scam me, claiming to be from a certain bank and said that my card had been frozen and my account had been frozen. And I listened to them, and I don't have accounts in those banks. I knew it was a fraud. But you know what? My mom is a sly old fox. They tried something on my mom a while back. A young man called her, and he said, Grandma, I'm in trouble. Send me some money. 
And mom has a tender heart, you know. She would, if it's a real grandchild, she'd be the first to send money. And she said, why, Herbie, is that you? Yeah, it's Herbie, Grandma, send me some money. She said, I don't have any grandkids named Herbie and hung up on them. So she got the last laugh on that, amen? But understand, they, they, I mean, scam artists today, they're pretty pretty uh, crafty, but they, they don't hold a candle these, to these Gibeonites. Now, the Gibeonites heard since Israel had come in, they were going to be annihilated. So they were very concerned about it. Some of the other groups of people band together to try to fight the Israelites, and they were very crafty, the Gibeonites. What they did, they got old wineskins and put patches on them and made them look real old, even older. They put on sandals that had, uh, they had to fix and so forth. They put old clothes a hundred years ago, just old clothes, even their bread. They took moldy bread with them. You see, they were neighbors to the Israelites, and they pulled a scam on the Israelites knowing the Mosaic Law. They did their homework. Mosaic Law said that they could make a peace treaty with, with, with uh, people from a long distance away. So they could make a peace treaty with them. So they were posing as they had traveled a long distance. They pointed to their shoes. Look, we wore our shoes out. We traveled so far. Well, look at our, our bread. It's moldy. These wineskins are falling apart. So they, they pulled a scam on God's people. Three words today. Somebody asked you, what did Brother Rick preach on? I gave you three words today. First of all, mistakes, then decisions, and then blessings. Three words. First of all, let's look at mistakes that you can make in your life. Somebody said it rightly, I think. If a dentist makes a mistake, it gets pulled. If a surgeon makes a mistake, it gets buried. If a lawyer makes a mistake, it goes to prison. If an electrician makes a mistake, it can be shocking, okay? So people make mistakes, but the thing about ordinary people like you and I, we have to live with our mistakes. Understand that each of us makes mistakes. You've heard me say many times in sermons, if you're not making mistakes, it's because you're not doing anything. If you're in there getting with it like Joshua and the Israelites are, sometimes you're going to make mistakes. Two different kinds of mistakes that I want to share with you this morning. The first one is mistakes of just out-and-out -out disobedience. Now, that is a mistake to disobey Almighty God. A clear command and warning of God, and you go ahead and, and you, you go against God's Word, you're making a mistake that you'll never get over. You won't recover from a mistake like that. I think of Saul, King Saul of the Old Testament, and some of the mistakes that he made. God commanded to do a certain way, and he did it just the opposite way. It, it, he never recovered from that. We think about people today that, who are unbelievers, and the word of God goes out to them from a heart of love. They hear the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, pastor, what is the gospel? The gospel today is good news that God loves you so much. He sent Jesus from heaven, his only begotten son, to die on a cross to pay for your sin and for my sin. Now, friends, news. But the Bible says people have to obey the gospel. We hear about believing the gospel, trusting in Jesus, so forth, and we need to do that, but when we do that, we're obeying the gospel. It's a sad thing today that some will be disobedient and make a tragic mistake. They hear the good news about Jesus, yet they don't obey the gospel, which calls each of us to turn from sin and turn to Jesus. I'm glad the gospel's out there, but today the gospel is to be believed. It's also to be obeyed according to Romans 10 and verse 16, if you want a good verse to, to show you that. But understand some mistakes today are just out and out disobedience, yet others today are like Joshua, like many of us. We're just serving the Lord from our hearts. We're putting everything we have into it. And sometimes you're so busy you're running like your hair's on fire. Can I get a witness out there? You just feel that way sometimes. Lord, stop the world. Let me get off. Catch a breath. But you know what, people? Uh, sometimes we make mistakes, and that's what happens to Joshua here. He's caught up in a moment. They're on a spiritual high, and sometimes we just out and out blow it. We just blow it. We mess up. Pastors usually quit on Monday mornings, I read somewhere. 
you know, uh, we're going to find that we should give it at least three days. Verse 16 says three days afterwards, after they uh, make this peace treaty, this covenant with the Gibeonites, they find out what they'd really done. So understand, sometimes we're going to make some mistakes, we're just going to blow it. Well, what do you, how do you handle your mistakes? That's the key today. What do you do when you mess up? Do you just quit and curl up in a ball somewhere? I hope not. Because God uses people who have made mistakes and have learned from it and have grown from it. So you should not curl up in a ball and quit. So we all make mistakes and it's how we handle our mistakes that will uh, determine our future in serving the Lord and walking with the Lord. It's how we handle things when we do mess up. So the first word today is mistake. Second word today is decision. Decision. God laid this on my heart so very strongly this week. Somebody today has decisions to make. Somebody has decisions on their heart. There's no doubt about it in in my life right now. We have decisions to make in our life. But you see here that he only took three, if he waited three days, he would have had a lot more information. But the, you see that at the heart of their problem, the decision they made that was a mistake, they did not confer with God. Look at verse 14 with me. So the men of Israel took some of their provisions and did not ask for the counsel of the Lord. Now you and I can be guilty of that if we're not careful. I mean, we may analyze the situation. We may Uh, details about something and we look it all looks right on the surface but uh, and that's all good we should do that we should use this thing between our ears Uh, as mom would say something other than a hat rack use your head for something other than a hat rack but the thing we need to use that God gave it to us but above all that we need to seek the counsel of almighty God we need to seek God's wisdom Understand today that God is everywhere at the same time. He sees all things. He understands all things. He never has to say, huh, or what. He never does. So we should never neglect speaking to God uh, about anything in our life. Any decision you make, why not call the king of kings in that council meeting? Why not call upon the one that spoke this world into being And dear friends, he he made everything out of nothing. Why not call upon the one that declares the end from the beginning? Call upon Almighty God. Decisions, first of all, we need to confer with God. They did a lot of things right here, but had they waited three days, they would have had a whole different take on things. Don't get in any hurry on that decision. Well, uh, I have a verse for you I want to give you this morning. And I think, with, I mean, I just believe with all my heart, when it comes to making a decision, this is the best formula in the Bible. Do you want to know what it is? You have a decision to make in your life. You're in the process of that right now. Look at Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. It'll be up on the screen, I believe, this morning for you as well. And and I believe with all my heart, this is the best formula for making a decision in the Bible. Look at verse 5. The Bible says trust, that's confidence. Trust in the Lord with how much? With all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and here's a promise, consequences. And He will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. I'll put the rest of it in uh, uh, for free, okay? This is really good. Don't miss this. It will be healing to your body and refreshment to your bones. You need that today? Well, preacher, I need some of that. Uh, Verse 8, I need some of that. Look at verse 9. Here's a great promise to you and a challenge at the same time. Honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first of all your produce. What's that saying? Keep Jesus first in your life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, the Bible says in Matthew 6, 33. Verse 10, here's a promise. So your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will overflow with new wine. Abundant life, dear friends. So first of all, when you're making a decision, search the scriptures. Spend time alone with God in his holy word. And then after that, pray with him. Pray to the Lord. Well, what is prayer? As I speak to the little children, they have some good questions about prayer sometimes. Makes me scratch my head. Good questions. Well, well, prayer is talking to God and listening to God. 
It's a conversation, you see. It isn't a one-way street where you go to God and he's like a glorified Santa Claus and you just ask him for things. Nothing wrong with, with petitions in your prayers and, and so forth. Nothing wrong with praying supplication and all that. We, we have needs in our life, but you know what? True prayer is praying to Almighty God and then listening to what God has to say to you through his word and through impressions the Holy Spirit would lay on your heart. So when you're making that decision, you search the scriptures, you pray about it, but yet there's something else I don't want you to miss. A lot of people miss this. I want you to know about it. The Bible says in Philippians 4, 7, and when you pray like this, in 4, 7 it says, and the, the Lord God Almighty, it, it shares, will give you that peace that surpasses all understanding. It will garrison up. It will guard your hearts. And the thing about a decision that you're making, you may study the scripture and it lines up with the word of God. You may pray about it and you're not facing any ramifications that what the decision you make goes against God, what he's up to in your life. And it all looks fine and good, but during that decision-making process, you never feel the peace of God come in. You just have an uneasy feeling about that decision. I have a dear friend at First Auburn. He's deacon. Tim Weisscup. And years ago, been, I spoke to him about it not long ago. He came to me and said, Pastor, pray with me about this decision I'm going to make. I have this job on I could make half again as much money and on with all the good things about it. So I prayed with him about it. I think in a period of uh, peace in my heart over this. It all looks good. It feels good and all. I just can't get that. I said, you can talk to him. Some of you know him. Talk to him about that. Later on, I think that place had trouble. Perhaps he would have lost the job anyway. But he did not have that peace to seal the deal in his life. Am I making sense to you? Lines up with the Word of God. Prayer life is good, however. And you look at the circumstances like Joshua did, and it all looks good on the surface, but God just doesn't give you that peace. You have an uneasiness about it. That is God warning you not to go down that path. Now, if you go down the path, I think God may still work it out for you for His glory and for your good, but why not avoid every problem and bad decision that you can? Can I get an amen in God's house? What's the old saying? One, uh, one, uh, a stitch in time saves nine. Uh, you ever hear that before? That means your shirt uh, is falling apart. Put one stitch in it, the whole sleeve may not fall off. So go ahead and do that in your life. So we see here, search the scriptures. That's conferred with God. Second of all, commit. Notice what he says. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Now, we have a modern word called commitment. Good word. I use it quite a bit. We need to be committed. But you know, had an even better word. It was called surrender. You use the word surrender today, and it scares people to death sometimes. Well, if I surrender to God, he'll put me in the deepest, darkest part of Africa. Well, probably not. But you know what? You surrender to God, and he, you start wanting the things you want if you had enough sense to want it. Can I get an amen in God's house? You start wanting the things that God wants in your life. And anywhere God sends you, he's going to give you the grace and to be blessed by him. It says, in all your ways. That's, that is surrender. Here I am, Lord, everything I am, everything I have, everything I will be is in your mighty hands. And you'll feel the peace in your life if you pray that and mean it. In all your ways, that's commitment. And he will make your path straight. The consequences of it, the word here is yasher. Yasher, and it speaks about somebody going ahead of you and clearing the way. God Almighty goes ahead of your path and he goes in with his spiritual bulldozer. He just clears your mouth out makes it smooth for you. And that's what he's speaking about here. That's what happens in your life. And then, of course, in verses 9 and 10, that is the great challenge in your life. Keep him first in all things. And here's the promise. And from the first of all your produce, so your barns will be filled with plenty. Can that be physical barns or spiritual barns? I think both. I think both. Your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. It's a picture of abundant life. David said it in Psalm 23, verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell 
in the house of the Lord forever. This life, uh, walking with the Lord, it's good, it's good, and it's very good, but it only gets better. Can I get anybody to sign up for that this morning? Goodness and mercy in this life and eternal life in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. Word number one was mistake. Word number two is decision. Word number three is blessing. Blessing. Now going back to Joshua chapter 9. Hope you put your marker there. Joshua chapter 9. We're going to see the blessing of God. Now notice here in verse 21 what happens. So they cannot strike against the Gibeonites on account of the word of God, or God would curse them. So what happens here in verses 21? Look what the Bible says. The leader said to them, let us live. And they became hewers of wood and drawers of water for the whole congregation, just as the leaders had spoken to them. So the Gideonites put themselves at the mercy of God in verse 25. Now behold, we are in your hands, do as it seems good and right in your sight to do to us. They just humbled themselves before the Israelites. And you know what Joshua does? Something very shrewd. And I think it's a God-given wisdom that Joshua had. He had them be the woodcutters and, and the water haulers. What are you going for, preacher? Notice in verse 27, but Joshua made them day hewers, that's woodcutters, of wood and drawers of water for the congregation. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. For the altar of the Lord to this day in the place which he would choose. Now, what am I saying? I'm saying that God used even their blunder. That was a blunder they made. Terrible decision they made, a mistake. But God blessed it. The blessings of God. Romans 8, 28. Don't you love that verse? For we know, we can know something. We know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to them that are called according to his purpose. God does things like that. Now, with the Gibeonites... Joshua made sure that he, they were in the presence of Jehovah worship. They were taking wood in to Jehovah's altar. They would be witnessing the worship of Jehovah. Joshua was giving them an opportunity to know God in a personal way. Isn't that a glorious thing? Then the thing about it, as we're serving God and as we look to the word of God, people are like some many people today are like Joshua, I think, serving the Lord. Many are in this church. Serving the Lord from your heart. Serving God with everything you have. But you're still short of the glory of God. As Joshua made a mistake, you and I make mistakes. But isn't it good to know that God has a safety net under us. When we're serving God that way and we mess up anyhow what we're going to do, He's going to turn it around. He has a way of doing it. Turn it around for our good and for His glory. God, that we even when we mess up, sometimes in relationships, people get in too big of a hurry. Had a lady come to me at a previous church, and I think she was 29. And I prayed with her. She didn't know whether she, uh, well, what's going to happen to me? I, she used the word old maid. You don't hear that much anymore. At 29, I thought, wow. Uh, you know what? I don't have a chance, she said. Preacher, look, you know, uh, I'm having trouble finding the right mate. And I said, you know what? God has your chance. Don't you worry about it. When it's your time, if it is your time to be married or whatever, God will take care of that. Just be patient. Be patient. And sometimes in relationships, we can make a terrible blunder in our life. It happens again and again. But according to 1st, 2nd Peter, if you study that, you know what God says in his word? Sometimes you can marry an unbeliever. Sometimes they can even pose as a believer. We've seen that happen before and heard of it happening too. But later on, you know what? According to the verses I could give you, God can turn that around for your good and for his glory. And through your conversation or your lifestyle, you can win that unbeliever to the Lord. And it happens again and again. Charlie Shoemaker was one that, that was won by his wife Lois. We can see it happen again and again. We see it happening even in relationships. Even in job, uh, certain job situations in your life. Took this job, well, I shouldn't have took it, but you know what? God will work it out for you or he'll open up another door for you. He's just that kind of a God. Sometimes we do our best, we still fail. But I want you to know we have a God that has our second chance. A God that will work it together for our good and for his glory. And today I want you to know, from my heart to your heart, 
keep up the good work. Sometimes we mess up. Sometimes we make a mistake. What do we do? Don't curl up in a ball and quit. Learn from it and move on. Just keep moving and serving Jesus because we're working for the night is coming when our work will be over. Our time is limited on uh, planet Earth. We need to make the best of the time that we have. Now, today, if you're not a believer, I don't want you to make the worst decision you could ever make in your life is to say no to Jesus. I read recently about a man in 1829. uh, His name was George Wilson. Now, George Wilson was convicted of murder. They had him dead to rights, convicted of murder. He confessed to it. Andrew Jackson, the president, in 1829, pardoned him. He said, you're free to walk. They came to him, the, the officials did. You're free to walk, you've been pardoned. And you know what George said? George said, well, well I'm guilty. I'm going to go ahead and die for what I've done. And you know what? They didn't do anything. They didn't know what to do. They took it to the Supreme Court. And they deliberated on it for quite some time. Finally, they rendered the verdict this, very simple. Pardon is nothing unless the guilty person receives it. Think about it. A pardon don't mean any, not worth the papers written on unless the guilty party receives it. Today I want you to know that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sin and my sin so that we can be pardoned of sin. But it don't mean a blessed thing to you unless you receive it. You can make the worst decision of your life, a decision you'll never recover from when you say no to Jesus and what he did on the cross for you. Now we're going to have a time of invitation. If God has dealt with your heart in any way, the altar's open for you. This is God's altar. It isn't mine. It isn't even the church's. It belongs to God, I guarantee you. And God would like to do business with you right up here in front. Pastor, I'm going through a time right now making a a huge decision in my life. The altar is open for you to confer with God. Today, preacher, I'm not certain if I go to heaven, if I were to die. I'm just not certain about that. The altar is open for you. Come and talk to the only one that can get you to heaven, the Lord God Almighty. Talk to him about it. Receive Jesus as your Savior today. You're looking for a church home, a church that will love you and pray for you, you and encourage you, a place where you can serve. I can think of none better than Westside Baptist Church. You want to join this great church, I pray that you would come today and make it official. I'm part of this church. Let's all rise together. Let's let God have his way in your life. Him 275. All to Jesus I surrender, all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence. but please don't make a mistake about Jesus. You'll never recover from that mistake. Come today and trust in him with all of your heart. Ask him to save you, and he will do it today. One more verse, nobody comes, we'll close. All to Jesus I surrender, Lord, 
I give myself to Thee. Fill me with Thy love and power. Let Thy blessings fall on me. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Amen. Miss Karen, our Sunday School Director, Sunday School Promotion Sunday. I love Sunday school. We are just so blessed here. You may be seated. We are so blessed here at uh, Westside Baptist Church with an awesome leadership team. And the kids have been coming, and they're just, they're really just excited about Sunday school. Um, our Sunday school leaders will have some certificates for some of the kids that will be promoting to the next class. I'll have the leaders come forward and just mention the name and what class they're coming from and what class they're going to. So, yeah. You're going to have the kids come up after you call their name so they can be up front and get their certificate. Okay, I'll hold one of your students. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer and I are in the zero to two class yeah, the, toddlers. the toddlers coleman cash grant and ava teague come here are all getting promoted to miss Faye's class come here cash come here ava come here <laughs> here's coleman come With here certificate. ava you put it out like that show here, everybody cash. show everybody Say yay me. Yay, me. yay me. That's it. All right, very good. Come on, Cash. Are there any other kids that's going to be promoted to the next class? Very far. Hello. So um, right now I have the first through third graders and the fourth through sixth graders. Um, and we have some promotions. Um, can you hear me? Okay. Yep. We have Kaylee Gibson, who is going into fourth grade. <laughs> Very proud of her. <laughs> and then we have uh, Cadence Gill. She is going to seventh grade. Okay. <laughs> and then we have Gunner Gill, and he is going into fourth grade. There you go. And also, in addition, I'm very proud of you guys. Um, our, our class is growing. Um, we, we have them all together right now, but we would like to separate them back. So um, if anybody's interested in working with the children, um, you know, come and visit, see what it's like, um, and then you can make a decision and talk to us about that. Uh, one other thing I'd like to do real quick is um, a special announcement to three of our kids. We are working on learning all the Bible uh, uh, books of the New Testament, and they learn to do this by memory. So, and if they can do it by memory, then they get a candy prize of their choice. So I have, um, I have Wes, and I have Bentley and Carter. And Bentley and Carter have only been coming here for a couple of weeks, and um, they already knew it. So I'm very proud of these three young men for knowing this information. So they're going to get awarded their candy prize right now. Can't beat a Hershey bar. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you.
thank you very much. I appreciate all the leaders and all the work and time and energy that it takes to plan, prepare, and, and do outreach and contact their, their kids. And uh, we just really appreciate our leadership team. Thank you very much. real quick um, um, we're so thankful to have Wilma back with us this morning God has been so good praise God for that and we have and Joyce is with us this morning we are so thankful that Joyce came over thank you so much um, I wanted to let everybody know that our, our brother in Christ Al he's at Golden Years now in room 104 for physical therapy so pray for him as his body heals from his broken elbow. And um, our sister in Christ, Pat Cadle, went to be with the Lord last week. Her service is this week on Tuesday at uh, Brown Dawson Flick Funeral Home uh, from 10 to 12 and services at noon. That's on Millville Avenue. So please pray for the family there. And I have a, a blessing I'd like to say, too, is that my mother, who is not with us here this morning, Ruby Jones, tomorrow's her birthday, and she'll be 101. So what a blessing that is. So if you would, please stand as uh, Tim leads us in prayer, and then we'll sing our closing song. We are one in the bond of love. We are one in the bond of love. We have joined our spirit with the spirit of God. We are one in the bond of love. Praise God for those little voices.